Today I'm going to be going over a Google ad strategy for local businesses. So this will be the longer version of, I'm going to create the same video where with a shorter version and a longer version, this one is going to be much more detailed. Uh, so if you're looking for the shorter version, that one will be out shortly. So let's get started here. We have our Google ads account. We're working in the new interface of Google ads. So if you see appearance up at the top here, you can switch over to the new interface. Once it's 2024, everyone will be using this interface. So very first thing you want to do when you get started is set up conversion tracking. So when we come over here, the what I want to go over is I have a complete Google Ads conversion tracking tutorial for 2023. Now, I've kind of adjusted the way I'm tracking tutorials since I've created this, even though I published it in May and it's only November. Uh, so I am going to update this. But if you go to the video chapters, you can actually see different ways to track conversions on your website. In this case, what you would want to track are the Google Ads phone call conversion tracking. And then if you look at the Google Ads conversion tracking with Google Analytics 4 and Google Tag Manager, that is another way to track specific thank you pages on your website or form submissions in addition to button clicks. So I'm going to be coming out with a lot of videos going over tracking because I know that is a headache for a lot of people, especially local businesses. So trying to make that process as easy as possible. So let's come back over to the example we're going to be using today. Uh, so this is my actual HVAC company. I do not run their ads. They already run Google ads and they run local services ads. So I found my HVAC company through a Google ad. So HVAC companies, um, I'm located around the Myrtle Beach area. So I am located in Myrtle's Inlet. And right here is the company that I found. And I actually think I just found them through the organic listings. They have great reviews uh, through their organic listings. So if we come over here, these are all the companies that are doing local services ads. So I will go over local services ads in a minute. But the other thing that's really important for a local business is having a really good Google business profile. People are going to either become a customer or not become a customer a lot of times based on your Google business profile. So make sure that you go over all your areas served, your hours that you are open, your phone number, answer any questions that people may have. The more information you have here, the better. If you have specific uh, videos, images, anything like that that will help you sell your services, do that as well. Most importantly, your Google reviews. So they have five-star reviews, and so far my experience with them has been great as well. So I should leave them a review too, but we'll do that after the video. Now, the first thing I want to go over for local businesses is beyond just using the Google Ads platform, which I would recommend still using the Google Ads platform. Uh, in addition to using Google Ads, almost more important is using Google local service ads. So when you search for basically any local service at this point, it seems like you're seeing local service ads at the very top of the results. So here are the two that are at the very top of these results. The reason why you want to use local service ads is if I call them directly, they pay for that phone call and that is a direct phone call to their business. So they're paying for leads. So if I message them directly, then what they can do is actually I am now a lead and they can follow up with me and they can turn me into a customer. So that is a reason why you want to use local service ads. You can basically set a monthly budget and say, I want to spend $2,000 a month and I want to spend, you know, it really depends on, on what industry you're in. So it's gotten a lot more competitive, but you may say, I want to drive leads at under $50 per lead. So that means for every phone call, every message to your business, you're spending, and I think the average per lead um, in, the, in the previous study that I've read is around $25. So it really depends on industry. It really depends on the overall value of your customers. But I mean, I, I have become a customer for life as long as I live in the house I live in for Air Doctor Services. If I move to another house in the same city, we'll still use Air Doctor Services. So you can drive customers for life. So that's why you do want to use local services ads. The other thing is if we come over here and we just click on more HVAC pros and we scroll to every single green check here are Google guaranteed businesses that are part of the local services program. So all of these different businesses are part of the local service ads program. So this is why you need to get involved in this as well, because you get top priority in Google. And basically what Google does is they go through a process where first and foremost, you have to see if you are eligible for local service ads. So you enter all of your business information. They will go through a background check, a screen check, all these different types of checks to make sure that you have a verified business, uh, make sure you have insurance for your business. And then what you get is either the Google guarantee, Google screened, or for health, you get licensed verified. These are all really important because it helps people actually find your business easily in Google ads and the little green check mark. It's tiny little green check mark, but it still helps people say, you know what? I can trust this business a little bit more. 
So Google Screen, Google Guaranteed, License Verified. So pre-badge ads, you can get it started before you have the badge, but getting started, what you want to do is check this eligibility. You can look by country at what is available in each individual country. Just looking at the United States here, these are all different types of businesses that can get started with local services ads. So as somebody who runs ads for a lot of local clients that offer local services, Obviously, this doesn't always help me, but I still recommend running local services ads along with your standard Google ads. So that's what I'm going to be going over today. So what we can do is first and foremost, you want to get started with local services ads. See how cheap you can drive leads. See how well those leads actually convert for your business. These can be very, very effective advertisements because when somebody is actively searching for HVAC companies near, near where you are, and what you can see is you get these top priority positions in the search results, but still right beneath it, Air Doctor Services has a sponsored ad as well. So there is still reason to drive more customers to your business using Google ads because they generally only put two at the top here. And some people may skip over this part, go right to the bottom because they're trying to find the actual search results themselves. So that is the important reason why you want to actually optimize using these local services ads. And then the other thing you can see is the cost per click for Google ads campaigns for companies like HVAC, very, very expensive. So that's why a lot of companies would prefer to just pay for leads. So let's come over here to our Google ads account. And what we want to do is you want to create a search campaign. So we want to target keywords with our search campaign. And ultimately the goal is to drive leads at the lowest possible cost, drive qualified leads at the lowest possible cost. So the very first thing you want to get started with is coming over here to conversions, go into your conversion summary. We're going to go to the Air Doctor Services website. Now they have different pages for some of the different things that they do. So let's just go to the AC repair page. If you come here, they have some more information about the exact service that they offer. And you can see they have some of the cities here. And then at the bottom, they have a contact form. So what you want to be tracking is first and foremost, this contact form. Does it go directly to a thank you page? Does it just submit uh, once, once somebody clicks submit, does it just basically say, okay, thank you for sending the form. Doesn't redirect. You can track form submissions very easily using Google tag manager, using Google analytics. And that's where I would refer you back to my video about Google ads conversion tracking. Cause I go over all of this in there. I am going to create updated videos as well. Maybe I'll put out a really long version of this video showing you how to set up conversion tracking too. So, um, it's very useful information for a local business. So that's the very first thing that you want to make sure that you are tracking any way that somebody can contact you. So you have a specific contact page. You want to make sure that you're tracking that contact page on your website. You have a schedule and appointment page on your website. You want to make sure you're tracking that as well. The other thing you want to track is your phone number up here at the top. You can use a service like callrail.com and actually set up local for set up forwarding numbers and you can have them localized with your area code so that when somebody comes from really any traffic source, you get five different numbers that are going to show and you basically know, okay, this person came from my SEO strategy. This person came from my Google ads campaign. This person came from my Microsoft Bing ads campaign. Maybe you're running Facebook ads. So it becomes easier to track using a service like CallRail. You can also track phone numbers pretty easily in Google ads as well. That is another thing I go over in this video. So sorry to keep referring you to this video, but it does have all this information here and maybe I'll put together a longer version of this one for local businesses in the future. Uh, so that's first and foremost is tracking all of those different conversion actions. So when you're in your Google ads account, what you want to do is create a new conversion action and you're going to see website app phone calls and import. If you already have your conversions set up in your Google analytics for account. So maybe you set them up when you set up your website, maybe you had your a search engine optimization team set them up. Maybe you've had Google ads reps in the past that have set these up. What you can do is do import Google analytics for properties. You're going to choose web, click on continue. And then you can select your actual event here, import and continue. Obviously, we're not going to import purchase. So we'll come back and the a couple other options here. So website, what you want to do is enter your website domain, scan it. I don't know why they even have this step. Enter your website domain, scan it. And then I generally use Google Tag Manager to track conversion actions. So maybe I will put together a longer video showing you exactly how I do that with Tag Manager. Again, it is in that video tutorial I showed you. Now we're going to click on cancel here. If you do new conversion action again, we do phone calls. One of the easiest ones to set up is calls from ads using call extensions or call only ads. So I don't know if they have a call extension showing in this advertisement. 
Yeah, they do. So this right here, you can actually track very easily. So we just click on that conversion action, set up the conversion action and say any phone call that's over 30 seconds, you can count every single phone call if you want, depending on the quality of the phone calls. Uh, so you can easily track these on desktop and on mobile. So if we come over to our Google ads account again, we could do calls from ads using call extensions or call only ads, click on continue. And then from there, you can set up your phone call lead, use it as a primary action. So you can actually bid and optimize for phone calls to your business. It's one of the key things that you want to drive to your local service business, obviously. So um, that's why you would want to make sure that you have this tracking as a goal and as a conversion in your Google ads account. So basically all you need to set up is the call length. So it, it automatically sets to 60 seconds. So you can adjust this if you know my, my customers that convert are generally on the phone for longer than two minutes. So you can set this to 120 seconds. I generally use the same value for each conversion and then adjust these depending on which conversion actions are the most valuable for your business with generally phone calls. Getting a customer on the phone is one of the best ways to turn someone quickly into a customer. Okay, so we have... We can create and continue this, but we're just gonna we're just gonna pass this for right now. I already have this set up right here: call assets or call only ads. If you click on new conversion action, you can also do phone calls to a phone number on your website. So if you click on continue, this one's very easy to set up as well. All you need to do is enter the destination number, so the phone call phone number that caller should reach when they call from your website. You enter your business phone number here. The display number on your website, enter the phone number people see currently on your website that should be replaced by a Google forwarding number. Enter it exactly as it appears on the website. So if we come over to the Air Doctor Services website, you want to enter it exactly how it appears right here. And you want to make sure it appears that way everywhere you have your phone number listed on your website. So they have that. So I would assume they have that set up as a conversion as well. So if we take this number, what we can do is you're just going to come back over to your Google Ads account. And the way it appears on your website here is how you want to enter it. You can actually see if it's a forwarding number. We'll look at there, although they may use a forwarding number here too. Um, now it looks like the same number. So maybe, yeah. So what you want to do is make sure that you set up, okay, this is the phone number people are going to reach when they call me, and this is the display number. Okay, so once you have all your conversions set up, click on create and continue. Make sure you're tracking phone, uh, all the phone call, call conversions on your website, clickable calls, uh, people calling from a desktop using forwarding numbers, uh, people really any way that somebody contacts your business, you want to make sure that you are tracking that. So I have a different example over here and some people use the text us option and you could just track every single time that somebody texts you. You could track every time someone clicks on this button, you want to track the phone number, you want to track the contact form, all of these things because then you know, okay, this person came to my website from Google ads, they searched this keyword and now they are a customer. So this is a person that a, a keyword that we want to continue to target and also a way that we want to actually continue to optimize our campaign. So let's get into the campaign building process. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on a new campaign. Now, first things first, what you may want to look at just before you even get started. So if you go to tools, and we go to planning and we go to keyword planner. If you want to drive more clients and more customers in 2024 and beyond, then you want to join Surfside VIP. It is the membership program for the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. You can join by going to surfsidepppc.com slash membership. The moment you join, you get access to all of my content in the membership section. I currently have 27 videos published. If we come over here, I talk about all sorts of things from content marketing, search engine optimization, and it's only $2.99 a month. That means for the entire year, it's less than $36. I'm also going to be going over how to become a freelancer that can get freelance clients and how to build your own service business like I've done for Surfside PPC. So if you're interested in joining Surfside VIP, go to surfsidepppc.com slash membership today and get started. It's only $2.99 a month and you get access to all of my premium content. This is where you can do all of your keyword research and you don't need to do too much research for a local business. Uh, so if we do HVAC company, Myrtle Beach, AC repair, Myrtle Beach, maybe we'll just do AC repair, HVAC company, and then we'll adjust the location targeting in the Google keyword planner. So this could be the first thing that you do. So HVAC company, AC repair, and then right here is where you want to adjust the actual location that you're targeting. So let's just say we target the entire region of Myrtle Beach. Not a This is actually a massive region. Um, you probably wouldn't target all of it, but that's perfectly fine. So when we click on save, we'll be able to get an idea of the average monthly searches and then the actual bid ranges for a lot of these keywords. So just doing this in your local area gives you an idea of how much you're going to spend per click. 
This is showing the top of page bid, the low range and the high range. So you can see these bids are very, very high and that's because the customers are valuable customers. So these are actual keywords that people are gonna type in that need your service now. AC repair near me, air conditioning repair, heating and cooling near me. So these are people that are actively looking for your service. This is showing over 1800 keyword ideas available. So you get a massive look at the amount of keywords. When you look at average monthly searches, you can see that they're gonna give us a range of data. If you have an active campaign, you can actually see all of this data. So you wanna set up an active campaign so you can see all the average monthly searches. The campaign I'm running is just an example campaign. So we are not going to continue to run that. So let's get rid of refined keywords over here. Let's come back to our campaigns. You can actually build campaigns in the keyword planner. Another video idea for me. Um, but now what we wanna do is we wanna come over here to create a new campaign. And what you wanna do is your goal is to drive leads. So now all the conversion actions you set up for your contact form, for your phone call leads, for uh, somebody booking an actual appointment on your website, for somebody clicking on your live chat bot and entering their, texting your business directly, all those things that you're tracking on your website, you wanna make sure you set up as primary conversions. You can set a value for each conversion so you can optimize for conversion value over time if you have, okay, a phone call's worth five, five. A contact form is worth two. So you could always set these up and really get down. I mean, what a real best practice is, is to keep track of all of this data online, offline, and understanding that, okay, anytime someone calls our business looking to become a new customer, what you can do is you can say that phone call drives X amount of value in revenue to our business. And you can use that value as part of your overall Google ads conversion tracking. Now that is really more of an advanced tactic. If you're just getting started, you're creating these campaigns, just count every conversion as one for right now. And then over time, you can always optimize using conversion values. So don't wanna to get too detailed here, but trying to give you all the, the best ideas. So now we're gonna start by creating a search campaign. The way we wanna reach our goal is a website visit. So we're driving people to our website. You can still drive phone calls from your assets. You can still drive lead form submissions from your assets. So I'll go over that as well. Now, I always recommend putting your business website in here. So let's come over here. Let's get on the correct website. I'm just gonna use their homepage and we are going to paste that there and we will do our local business service Google ads campaign example. Okay, so we're gonna click on continue. And now we get into the campaign creation process. So now as we get into this process, one thing I would like to point out is if you are interested, real quick over here, if you are interested in hiring Surfside PPC for your PPC advertising services, I work really well with local businesses. Uh, so my minimum budget, I have 3000 a month. If it's less, just contact me, we'll figure something out. Um, but fill out this form and you and I will be on the phone call on a phone call within several days and I can have your campaigns launched within several days as well. So let's come back over here and continue creating our campaign. Now, bidding strategy, one of the challenges when you first get started is you don't have conversion data in your account. So you still want to focus on conversions. Now, the other option I said before was conversion value. Since you're just driving leads and every lead is worth one right now for our business, you wanna focus on individual conversions. We're trying to drive phone calls, we're trying to find, drive lead form submissions, and we're not focused on the value of all those conversions. We can always add that later. Um, you can set a target cost per action. The one problem with setting a target cost per action for a brand new campaign is it essentially sets up constraints for your campaign. So there are ways to set up a target cost per action and there are ways to set up your bidding strategies where you actually limit your cost per click. So let's just say your target cost per action, we wanna drive customers at $75 or less. Now we went over earlier that the average cost per click for a lot of these keywords is probably gonna be somewhere around, let's say $15 per click. Um, we could probably get it to 10 to $15 per click on a given day. So it really depends on how much competition we really have. I don't go always based on exactly what Google Ads numbers are. But when you first get started with your campaign, you're just using conversions, you're not setting a target cost per action, you may find that you run through your budget pretty quickly. So I generally recommend when you get started with your campaign, we're gonna click on next here. Um, when you're setting your budget, which we'll do later on in the video, I generally recommend setting your budget lower to get started because you don't wanna spend a ton of money on your cost per click costs when you first get started when you have no conversion data at all. So the, there's companies like an Air Doctor Services here that probably has been running Google ads for a little, 
a little while. So they have some data in their account. They have conversions coming in. So their bid strategy is much more optimized than it would be for a new campaign. This is one of the challenges for building a new campaign, but it should not deter you from doing it. It's just you have to understand you're making an investment, and that investment is trying to find more customers. And in the beginning of our campaign, it's not going to perform as well as it will in a month, in two months, in three months. So networks, we're going to use the search network. We are going to include Google search partners, and we are not going to include the Google display network. You can always segment by results and remove the Google search partners. So that is just, again, another matter of preference there. Now for our location options, we are going to choose presence, people in or regularly in our targeted location, and we are going, going to enter, we'll just do the entire Myrtle Beach market, so the DMA region, and we're going to keep coming down here. So probably wouldn't, they probably don't target that entire area, but that's perfectly fine. We, we would just target Myrtle's Inlet, Myrtle Beach, Pauly's Island, these are, these are some of the surrounding cities, so probably just, there's two different counties we'd probably target, and those are probably the two counties that they serve. So target presence, people in your regular or regularly in your targeted locations, set your language targeting here, uh, add audience segments to your campaign. So in this case, and sometimes they pull up the audience segments automatically. I think it might pull up. Yeah, it's going to pull, pull up toys because of my uh, brick pop website. So if we search here and we search HVAC, sometimes you can find people that are in market for certain services. Uh, so people that are in market for climate control and air quality, home inspection. So you can add all these because maybe they're in the market for HVAC services as well. Um, all of these audiences basically just set to observation. So you can see how these audiences actually perform within your campaign. And really, it just helps guide Google a little better to say, OK, some of these audience segments are going to be more interested in our services just based on some of these services here people that are interested in some of these services are much more likely to be interested in hvac services because you probably own your house and you're probably do using a lot of different services that you're going out to get and hvac is obviously one of them because we can't do those things ourselves so you want to set some audience segments to kind of guide google on what your type of customer is probably looking for Broad match keywords here, so you can turn this on or off. I always keep this off and use keyword match types, especially for a local campaign. Ad rotation, optimized to perform the best performing ads. Start and end dates, so you want to start. You can always set an end date if you want to or schedule a start date. Ad schedule for local businesses. This is where you would use it more often. So what you could do is really easily, you can say, okay, Monday through Friday, you know, we're 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and you can set it just like that. I believe they have, yeah, they're open 24 hours here. So I'm assuming their phone line is always active. They do emergency services. So that means if somebody's calling at 9 p.m., it doesn't make sense to turn the ads off because they may be looking for either emergency services or what they may also be looking for is just they happen to be searching for an HVAC company to get an appointment for the following day because maybe their their heating went out or their air conditioning went out. More likely air conditioning went out in, uh, in the Myrtle Beach area where it gets really hot. So ad schedule here, we'll do all days more settings so that's all we need for right now we're going to click on next so now this is where i like to add our url here in the beginning because they're going to give us pretty much a good list of keywords to get started with now if you do nothing with these keywords you create one ad group you're basically not creating an organized campaign so your very first thing you need to do is create ad groups based on some of the themes of what you're actually targeting so if we scroll down here we're looking at some of these different keywords here so I, what i can do and what i generally do is Let's just say air conditioning repair, air conditioning service. I'll say, okay, anybody searching specifically for air conditioning repair, air conditioning service, we're going to put in an ad group. That can include AC repair, AC and heating repair. So these are essentially the same exact keywords. You don't need to separate those keywords. And then for HVAC, that would be its own separate ad group. So I will usually kind of... Uh, Go through these keywords first and foremost and structure them into the way that I want to set up my ad groups. So get rid of some of these that we're already targeting. Air conditioner maintenance, air conditioner services. These can all go into this one right here. Um, we could always take these out and build their, our own ad groups around these later on. Maybe what we can do is have one that's like heating and air conditioning. That might make more sense. Let's do that. Okay, AC and heating repair. We'll do this. AC and heating repair. So then we can send people to kind of more of a broad landing page that goes over AC and heating repair, air conditioning repair, air conditioning maintenance, HVAC, heating and air companies. So affordable HVAC repair near me. This is, this is one of those things where you may say, okay, do I want to target this keyword affordable? Because if you're not the cheapest one on the market, if you're not offering really cheap uh, HVAC repair services, then you may say, I don't even want to target that keyword because I don't want 
a customer to come to me and say, okay, I just can't afford to pay that right now, which, you know, a lot of people are looking for affordable HVAC and I would assume the rates are pretty, pretty consistent across the board. And that's what I've always found with HVAC in general. So um, next HVAC repair near me. If we're already targeting HVAC repair, HVAC service, you really don't need to target all of these keywords. So AC repair, air conditioning repair, air conditioning service will target all of these different search terms as well. So you don't need to get too worried about, I need to target hundreds of keywords. Google Ads is set up now where I recommend using phrase match keywords, where you put quotes around each of your keywords here. And we just put quotes around every single keyword. Okay, and now these are going to be the phrase match keywords we target. So the way phrase match works is it looks at this phrase right here and finds other keywords that have pretty much the same meaning, other synonyms, misspellings, uh, any type of keyword variations that would be relevant to this specific keyword. Now there's three keyword match types. You have broad, which looks like this. So you don't put any quotes, you don't put any brackets around it. You have phrase match. Phrase match is basically the middle level keyword between broad and exact match. Exact match is going to be air conditioning repair, and you're gonna put brackets around the keyword like that. When you're setting up your ad groups, you wanna choose one match type. So we're setting, we're targeting these keywords. I would just recommend targeting all phrase match keywords when you get started. I find it gives you the best balance between volume and also relevance because there's nothing worse than actually ranking for irrelevant keywords. You don't want to rank for irrelevant keywords, obviously. So what we're trying to do is find that balance of, okay, these, these are the keywords we want to target, but we also want to make sure our campaign is really tight. So if you're going to choose one keyword match type, I would recommend either phrase or exact match for a local services campaign. Google is going to tell you to upgrade your keywords to broad match. Basically, the way the Google Ads system works is you they want you to target broad match keywords. They want you to set up your conversion tracking in the very beginning, and they want you to use a smart bidding strategy like maximize conversions. Over time, what Google is going to do is they are going to test all of these different keywords and search terms and try to get you the ideal customer at the lowest cost. The problem with using broad match is it always leads to irrelevant searches within your search terms report. So when you're looking at what actually triggered your advertisements, when you're using broad match keywords, I always find that they are just a little bit too broad and they're not gonna be the keywords that we wanna target. So let's target these keywords right here in our first ad group. And then what we can do is I'll open up a notepad file real quick. Okay, and then within our notepad file, I'll generally just take some of these other keywords here and then that will help me guide some of the other keywords I wanna target. So we'll paste those here. Now, last but not least, before we kind of start creating our ads, let's copy these really quick because I wanna go over a quick way to do keyword research in addition to using the keyword planner like I showed you earlier, the Air Doctor Services Inc. here. So let me paste these keywords in case I, uh, in case I end up copying, copying over them and losing them. So what I generally do a lot of times is if you're working with a client like this, um, come to the, their services page. So we're gonna go over to services, see they have a main service page here, and just take some of these keywords right here. So we're just gonna take all of their keywords, we have their website up at the top, we can add up to 10 keywords here, I believe. I generally don't add 10 at a time. But we can add all these different keywords, and what we're trying to find is basically every relevant keyword for our service business. So heating repair, we could, we're gonna have to type this one out. Uh, heating installation, keep coming down here. HVAC maintenance and service. So this is what I use them for. HVAC service, okay, keep coming down. Fresher indoor air. So let's, let's add that as well. And then maybe what we can do is, so these are, must be all the services they offered. So duct cleaning. So they have a few more over here. This is fine though for right now. Let's just get started with these. Um, could always add some of these duct cleaning services why not okay so now we have our keywords here i think i've what eight total keywords and then when we click on get keyword suggestions it's going to pull in way more keywords now since we added some of these different options and we used our url as well so we get a few more keywords not too many actually uh there's just not that many keywords for h hvac repair most people are looking for air conditioning repair air conditioning maintenance air conditioning service so we'll come down here add those keywords in there um Maybe we can add a few more to our existing ad group. Okay, so that's good for right now. The main thing you wanna do is just make sure you're not targeting the same keywords across different ad groups. Uh, Google Ads is much better with those now where you know, if we're targeting these keywords here, Google's not gonna to have too much crossover where we're actually competing with ourselves, which used to happen in the old version of Google Ads. 
So we're gonna keep scrolling down here and now we need to start creating our ads. So what you wanna do is for your final URL, this is the landing page where you're sending traffic. The best thing to do is create custom landing pages that are designed to convert. This landing page isn't a bad landing page. It's very informational, but everything to convert is at the very bottom. Generally what I would do is put some of this, like the contact form at the very top, or at least make sure at the very top there's, you know, having a big image here, I would rather on the left-hand side, rather than asking for people to review you, I would put the form right here or right here on the right-hand side with some information, why you should contact uh, Air Doctor Services, but, you know, that's besides the point. You could always test your landing pages as you go. So for our services, we are going to come over to our air conditioning services, and we're going to send people to this landing page. I'd also put my phone number prominently at the top. It's up here, so it probably appears pretty well at the mobile website. Uh, we'd have to look at that. You definitely want to look at your landing pages on mobile and on desktop. Make sure everything looks good. Make sure it's very easy to use. Make sure people can easily find the way to contact you when they visit your website. Now, a lot of people may visit this website on desktop, call this number, and that's that's as easy as it is, or schedule the appointment at the top here. So overall, this would be a solid landing page just using this service page on the website. And then as a best practice, what you could do, and this is where you could work with a, a PPC advertising team, something that Surfside PPC does, is set up a separate landing page where it's really just geared towards we're trying to drive conversions. The very top we have, give us a call immediately. Uh, to schedule an appointment and we'll get you started with our professional air conditioning service or our air conditioning service professionals um, schedule an appointment if that's easier contact us if you have any questions and kind of put some of this information more towards the bottom of the page than at the very top of the page okay so let's copy this url let's come back over here and we're going to paste our final url here so that's our landing page this is where we're sending traffic to now display path what you could do is make it so you do something like AC repair, and this will update your display URL right here at the top. Not a huge deal. I wonder if they even have this set in their advertisement. Okay, so they have AC service. So you can kind of see how they have that set up. Okay, now as we build the ad, a few different things I want to point out. So it looks like they have, so their headline is just their, their brand name here. 24-7 services available, serving Myrtle's Inlet, Myrtle Beach, Garden City, Pauly's Island, and surrounding areas. These just look like their description lines from what I can tell. Um, it doesn't look like these are actual structured snippets or callouts right here looks like these are callouts uh, these are good call out extensions so air conditioning repair service city open 24 hours call us this is a call asset these down here are site link assets so since i searched their brand directly they got the site link assets you don't always get all these massive site link assets on your advertisements but as we come down here you can see the next one is airdoctorpro.com, air purifier Black Friday sale, and they have a much smaller advertisement. These right here are just pulling from the SEO Quake plugin that I have installed. I think it's from SEO Quake. Okay, so let's come back over to our advertisement, and we're going to do our calls. Uh, since we chose calls as one of our goals, we want to come over here to calls, choose your call asset here. And what you want to do is make sure that your call asset is set up to actually record conversions, which is what we did earlier in the video. So we have our call number set up. Keep scrolling down, and now what you want to do is set your headlines. So they're going to say, for optimal ad performance, include these keywords in your headlines. What I like to do is click on View Ideas and View Ideas. So what you're trying to do really with your headlines is match closely to what people are actively searching for. So in this case, we could do the area, Merle's Inlet AC Services, so some of these things like quality comfort products, no. Specific city, I would generally just do Merle's Inlet AC repair, something like that. So you can use the specific city um, just so people can kind of say, okay, they're located here. They can help me. They can come to my house quicker. So affordable price, that's perfectly fine. So air conditioning services, air conditioning repair, air conditioning installation. We could do brand name, air doctor services, fast and affordable service, 24-7 emergency. I don't know how many emergency 24-7 people need with air conditioning, but maybe if it's really hot. AC services, uh, train AC air doctor. No, that's installation service available, repair service available. Overall, I mean, maybe we could do air conditioning maintenance, um, but overall this itself would be perfectly fine as an advertisement. So maybe we'll add air conditioning maintenance. And the other thing I always do, capitalize the first letter of each word. Um, and down here, maybe we'll do repair services and maintenance. No, it doesn't fit. Okay, so this is perfect, the amount of headlines we have. 
uh, I wouldn't worry too much about your ad strength. This is basically Google telling you, you should improve your ad strength, but they're not actively using this in the auction. They're not looking at the ad strength of your ads and saying, okay, this ad strength is only average. Their competitor over here has a great ad. So therefore we're, we're not going to show this ad as often. It's not really as much like that. So include popular keywords. It's basically saying these are two more popular keywords. We're not going to target air conditioning services near me in our ad because somebody ser searches for air conditioning services near me. You want an ad that basically looks, let's see if we start having, where you have something like air conditioning repair and then it says Merle's Inlet SC or something like that. So this is perfect. Air doctor services, Merle's Inlet AC services. So then you know, okay, this air conditioning company is near me. I should contact them. Okay, let's keep scrolling down. We have our call asset added. We have our headlines added. Next is going to be our description lines. So you could also do make descriptions unique and they'll give us some description options here. I'll generally use some of these. Um, so air doctor service is done right, including AC repair and installation. Um, so contact air doctor for quality services done right including AC repair and installation. Perfect. Okay, quality comfort products. That must be that must be like one of their taglines or something. HVAC and other services offered. Um, so this not the greatest description line, but you want to just write description lines like this one. Um, you could also put like we serve, uh, it's probably Ori and Georgetown. These are the counties. Um, ductless heating and cooling mini splits. So wouldn't want to do that one. So we'll get rid of that. Make Air Doctor Services your go-to air conditioning contractor. Um, air conditioning service partner. Okay, so that works for contractors and it works for serving Myrtle's Inlet, Myrtle Beach, Garden City, Pauley's Island, and surrounding areas. Okay, so we have four description lines now. These are good overall description lines. Ad strength is still average, that's fine. It's saying include popular keywords, so you know, what we probably could do is, I don't know if we have AC repair yet, so that's probably a possible popular keyword. You can keep adding these until you get this up to great, but make headlines unique. Honestly, this is perfectly fine right here. Um, so installation service available, we could always add that. Maybe it'll make our headlines more unique. Okay, so this is this is perfectly fine. The other thing you can do, so now that made it unique, include popular keywords. We pretty much have all those already. The other thing you can do is pin certain headlines. So if you want to make sure that your headline says something like air conditioning services in the first spot of your ad, then you can always pin that as well. The moment you start pinning headlines, it's going to lower your ad strength. I don't know why it just does it every single time. I guess Google would rather you, and they have recommended here, show in any unpinned position, but I don't know why adding, if you are going to pin, you should add multiple different options to the pin. So I would do this one, this one, this one, I would probably do. AC services, and I would probably do air doctor services. So then you can have different lines actually pinned there, and that would should increase your ad strength as you go. Keep scrolling down here, business name and logos. So here is where you want to actually verify your business with Google Ads, and from there you can click on get access and go through that process. Pretty quick process, especially if you already have a Google business profile. You could pretty much do it in a day. Site links is where you want to link to some of the other pages on your website. So when you click on create, you can see I have other ones in this account for some of the past tutorials I've done. The site links, and they already have some here, so online specials and coupons, this is a really good site link to have. Contact us, perfect site link. Schedule online service, perfect site link. Financing options, another perfect site link. So they actually do a really good, this is a really good advertisement. Whoever's running their ads is doing a great job. Um, so I would probably just use all of these, and basically the way you set up site links is you just copy, you would just put your site link text, which is this is how they have it set up, and then you could do description line one and two. Theirs is probably... And you can, you can combine the two description lines, as you can see here. So if you do description line one, I'm not sure where the cutoff is. No. Okay, so there you go. This is probably exactly what it looks like in their account. Online specials and coupons. Check out our great deals for your next AC service. Print coupons now. And then final URL. We'll go to the website to get this one. And if we come over to, let's see, specials here. So copy link address. And now this is probably the final URL for that one. So then you can set up the other site links. You want to use at least four site links. And really what you want, that's why I said they did just good, such a great job. You want site links that actually drive results. You don't just want to send people to like your about us page, or you don't want to send people like if we come over here, 
You don't want to do things uh, like employment, project gallery. That's not really what people are looking for. People are looking for service. So send them to your air conditioning service page. Send them to the AC installation page. Maybe they're interested in AC installation. Uh, send them to your specials page, your financing page, your contact us page, your schedule and appointment page. Anything that actually drives conversions is the pages you want to use for site links. So those are the four that I would set up. I'm just going to set up the one for this example. We'll click on create, but you want to set up at least four and add four at a minimum to your ads. You'll need at least two for them to appear. So these won't even appear, but that's fine. This is, this is not a real campaign I'm running. Call outs is where you want to put things uh, like if you're putting new call out here. So you could do 24 hour service, air conditioning installation, Generally, you can use structured snippets for the actual services that you offer. I'll go through those in a second. Call out text is like your selling point. So 10 plus years in business, average five-star reviews, um, something, maybe something like service guaranteed. Um, so different things like that is where you want to use your call out extensions. You definitely want to set up at least four call out extensions as well. Under more asset types here. So promotions, if you have any specific promotions, so maybe you have like a new customer promotion. So you can do occasion here, you can do none. You would set language, currency, promotion type, monetary, monetary discount, percent discount, up to, up to. So what you could do is monetary discount and just say $50 off for new customers or $50 off when you book a an ongoing maintenance plan for the year. So they have yearly maintenance plans. So if you say, okay, you sign up for the maintenance plan, we'll give you $50 off today. Prices if you have fixed prices. So sometimes if you're a service company, you can use a, a fixed price, like how much it costs for a just just for the, the repairman walking in the door. So you can say prices start at $80, something like that. You could also put specific prices for specific services, but generally for HVAC, you're probably not going to do that. Structured snippets allow you to add just additional details about some of your offerings. So there's different ones for different types of businesses amenities, brands, courses. In this case, it's going to be service catalog. And this is where you put AC repair, air conditioning. You see this is geared towards like a mechanic. So oil change, smog check, tire alignment. So that's that's kind of how you set up structured snippets. Lead forms, you can add a lead form. So I have a lead form um, asset video on my channel that will, I will link in the video description. But what you could do is create a new lead form, set a headline, business name, description line. You can see name, email. You can put like address, phone number, different things like that. Probably just do phone number to get started and maybe city uh, just so you have an idea of where they're from. And then you could do some additional information, qualifying questions. Ideally, what you would want to do is for the lead delivery option is to actually set a webhook so this goes directly into your CRM. You can also incorporate Zapier, so it allows you to quickly connect your lead form with over 3,000 apps, so that Zapier is another option there, and that would automatically put people who fill out your lead form directly into your CRM, so then as you have your salespeople uh, looking at all of your leads throughout the day, then you see that information immediately. So that's really a best practice for your lead forms. Uh, the other thing that you can do is Google will store your leads, and it says you can only download leads that have been collected within the last 30 days. So obviously, if you have a lead that's over 30 days old, they're probably looking for another AC repair company at this point. Um, apps, so you can add a mobile app, but that wouldn't be relevant here. So we click on done. We have our ad advertisement created. We have our ad group created, air conditioning repair. Let's name our ad group. So we'll say air AC repair. Okay, and now we're going to come down here, click on next, and now it's setting your budget. So this is where, and they have your recommended budget. Now, the recommended budget is not a bad thing here because it kind of gives you an idea probably of how much other competitors are spending. Um, it's going over your campaign settings. So your weekly cost would be $1,000 setting a budget at this level right here. So you may say when you're getting started with a campaign, let's say you do want to spend $150 a day. What you could potentially do when you're starting your campaign is just say, let me start at $75 a day. Now, the one area where it's going to be more difficult for this is your cost per click is going to be very high. But this is showing 13.2 weekly conversions, $40 cost per conversion, that'd be great, and weekly cost of $525. This is saying your budget is lower than other advertisers' budget, which may affect performance. That means other advertisers are bidding higher for some of the different keywords that you're targeting. So your budget that you want to set obviously depends on you want to drive you know, the most relevant leads, you want to drive profitable leads. Uh, the other thing to look at with your budget is if, for example, you're spending $100 per day, your weekly cost is going to be $700. Over the course of a month, you're going to spend around $3,000. Take your average daily budget, multiply it by 30, and that's how much you're going to spend over the course of a month. So you may have 
a a Wednesday or something where it's hot, where a lot of people have AC repair, and you may spend a hundred hundred twenty five dollars that day. You may have another day where it's not as busy, and you may spend seventy five dollars. So Google is going to use your budget and try to optimize it for each individual day over the course of a month. So what you don't want to do is adjust your budget all the time. You don't want to say, okay, let's spend a hundred dollars today. Okay, we spent a hundred and twelve dollars. Okay, tomorrow let's spend a hundred seventy five dollars. Okay, we spent a hundred forty two dollars. You know what? That's way too much. Let's spend seventy dollars. You don't want to do that. You basically want to set a monthly budget and divide it by thirty, and then use that as your daily budget. So we'll say a hundred here. We'll click on next, and now our campaign is ready to publish. So we have our campaign name here, type, objective, our goal, bidding. Basically everything that we need here, no errors or anything. Um, so this is what your campaign should look like when you're start starting a search campaign. Maximize conversions to get started, and we're going to publish our campaign. Now we are not done building at this point. So now what we want to do is come over to our campaigns here, and we want to open up our local business service Google Ads campaign example. I'm going to pause the advertisement here because I don't want to spend money on this ad campaign. As much as I like the company that uh, that does my air conditioning, I don't need to drive them any more any free traffic. Um, so we'll just make sure all of our ads are paused in this account. Okay, so once your ads are paused, obviously your campaign won't run until you enable them again. So now what we can do is we pause our ads, and from there what you're going to do is you want to keep building out your ad groups. So let's come over to our search campaigns. Still getting used to this new Google Ads interface. After you master the old interface, they give us a new one. So um, local business service, this is our, and we just have our one ad group here. So now it's time to open up our notepad file and start building more ad groups. So this is really where I think a lot of people start to struggle is trying to organize campaigns because what you're trying to do is organize things by theme. Sometimes the easiest thing to do when you're trying to organize is just look at some of these individual pages. So we have heating, furnace repair. So we could target the keyword furnace repair. Heating installation we can target. Commercial. If you come over to some of these pages, you see commercial HVAC services. So keeping it really simple, you can basically say, okay, let's just take all of these keywords they have and we'll target all these keywords. So when we come over to our campaign and we click on the plus sign here, and we're creating a new ad group. So there's two options when you're creating ad groups, standard and dynamic. If you don't want to target keywords altogether, you want to put a little bit more, you know, give Google some the, the ability to target your website, you could see if you use a dynamic ad group here, and you can only create dynamic ad groups after you launch your search campaign anyway, what it's going to do is it's going to use your domain. So it's going to use our website here. And then as we scroll down here, you can set your ad group name. There are a bunch of different categories. So let's just say heating we use. The preview here would be if somebody searches for Air Doctor Services Inc. Merle's Inlet, it would set our landing page. It looks like to the heating services landing page. And this is what our ad would look like. So the other thing that we can do is set specific web pages. So if you're saying, okay, I want to target this commercial heating air conditioning all you can all you have to do is take this page and this would be a good page for it because there is some content on the page and there are some good keywords on the page that you would target anyway and you can say i want to use this exact url to target for this ad group it's going to be commercial hvac okay and you can set up your whole campaign this way so dynamic ads will work very well too just along just like search ads do and they make it a little bit easier actually to target so we're using exact URLs. We're going to click on add over here for this. This is going to be our target. Our target is basically everything on this URL. So Google is going to come into our website, look at the title of the page, look at all the content on the page, look at the URL and say, okay, these are going to be the most relevant uh, search terms that we want to target, the most relevant keywords that we want to target based on this service page. So that's how dynamic search ads work. They actually make it a little bit easier to set up campaigns, especially for a beginner. Uh, so we're just setting a URL, basically where we want to send our landing page traffic. And all you have to do is write two different description lines. So I'm just going to take, or I'm just going to take these directly from this website. Okay, so perfect. You want to use, you know, I want to capitalize every letter. Obviously, this is not a campaign I'm running. So uh, let's let's not spend too much time on the ad copy process. That could be a separate video. Okay, so now we have our two description lines. I would probably do description lines along, you know, contact us for commercial heating and air conditioning in Merle's Inlet and some of the other surrounding areas. Uh, some of the things we do include commercial air conditioning and heating repair, maintenance, and air quality. So you have your two description lines there. So we'll scroll down here, click on done, and now we have our dynamic search ad. We click on save and continue. And now what we're able to do is we have our second ad group created. 
Everything else with the dynamic ad is done by Google. So you have your dynamic ad target here. And then when you come over here and click on your ads, what you can see it's site dynamically generated headline, a dynamically generated display URL. It's most likely just gonna send all the traffic directly to this page. Since this is our target, it's gonna send it to this page. You could also use rules when you're setting your dynamic search ads, but you don't necessarily need to, need to do that for a website like this. You can create multiple ads and just write different description lines. The other thing is you wanna make sure that within your ad groups, you have really good assets. So the assets are not gonna be automatically generated here. So just make sure you have your site links added to the campaign level. You can add specific site links to the ad group level if you wanna make it even more targeted. You can add specific callouts to the ad group level and say, okay, for this ad group, for commercial HVAC, I wanna put uh, commercial air conditioning, commercial heating, uh, commercial HVAC repair, HVAC maintenance, uh, commercial air quality. So different things that you could actually target within the page. Uh, so that does make your ads more relevant and helps with the overall overall your campaign strength, your ad strength. So let's come back over to our campaign here and we're gonna finish off this video here. So we open up our campaign screen, we open up our campaign, come over to ad groups, should have just clicked ad groups. And we click on the plus sign here. And what we could do is to finish this off is when you're setting your keywords for a standard ad group, you can continue doing keyword research. We already had some of these for HVAC repair, HVAC service. So we could just target some of these HVAC keywords. We can go through some of these other ones and just make sure we have all of our HVAC keywords here. Okay, I think there's some, okay, affordable HVAC repair, why not? Let's target that keyword too, okay. And then what we could do is paste all these here. We have HVAC repair multiple times. We have HVAC service multiple times. So I didn't really do too much with these keywords. Make them all phrase match. Okay, so we have phrase match keywords here. Um, we can set a URL to scan for our keywords. Name your ad group. So we'll just do HVAC repair. You could just set this as HVAC if you want. Keep coming down, save and continue. And now what we wanna do is create our ad again. So obviously update your final URL. Make sure we're using the most relevant final URL from the website. I don't know if they have a specific, probably just use this air conditioning page. I don't know if they have like a specific, they have HVAC maintenance, but this is probably more for their service agreement. Um, so let's just use the air conditioning page again. And we'll come down here, we could put HVAC here. And what you would wanna update in each of these headlines is just make sure they're matching the types of keywords you're targeting, HVAC maintenance, HVAC service, HVAC repair. So you could just come over here and just change air conditioning to HVAC in all of these. Uh, so we'll copy and paste HVAC repair, HVAC installation, they have HVAC maintenance. Uh, so update all your headlines here so you can keep some of the other ones as well. Um, update description lines to make sure that you're using HVAC repair, HVAC maintenance in your description lines as well. It's just showing poor because we don't have popular keywords in our headlines. That's perfectly fine. Add all of our site links, add any of our relevant assets that we're using. Uh, your calls will be added at the campaign level already. You can add structured snippets, which are added at the campaign level, but we can add you know unique structured snippets for each individual service if it requires. So we create our ad, save and continue, and now we have our new ad group created. Rinse and repeat this process until you get all of these keywords targeted. So then within your campaign, when you're targeting your keywords, so we come over here to audiences, keywords, and content, we can look at our search keywords. See, we have all of our phrase match keywords we're targeting. And then what you could also do is incorporate those dynamic ad targets like we talked about as well. So you could target individual pages. I would really recommend doing one or the other uh, when you're creating your ad groups, either create standard ad groups or create dynamic ad groups. And you can use both, but you don't wanna use both for the same targets. So I don't wanna go and create a standard ad group now for commercial HVAC because we already have this targeted with our dynamic ad group. The very last thing I wanna cover here is when we come over to our search campaigns, we come to the campaign level and we go to our campaign settings here. So we click on the settings icon. We open up our settings. So our settings should all be configured correctly. We have our campaign name. Goals are our conversion goals. These are the goals we're optimizing for, for this campaign. Com uh, customer acquisition, bid equally for new and existing customers. Uh, marketing objective is lead. Google search network search partners, correct location targeting. Use the presence option for location targeting so you're not getting leads from outside your service area for people that are planning a Myrtle Beach trip that live in North Carolina. So that's why you would wanna use presence because the presence or interest will start targeting people who are showing, oh, you know what, maybe I'm going, I wanna to move to the Myrtle Beach area. Then they're gonna say, oh, I need HVAC near me and they still live in Charlotte, North Carolina. So 
That's why you want to make sure you're using presence for the location targeting. Language targeting, the your daily budget. Obviously, use your monthly budget. Divide it by 30. Come up with a daily budget. Bidding strategy. This is really what I want to go over. So you can set a target cost per action here, and it kind of sets more of a constraint on your campaign. So if you're running your campaign at $100 a day, the best practice for Google Ads is if you're driving a minimum, an absolute minimum of 15 conversions every 30 days. What you really want to drive is over one conversion per day. So you want to drive more than 30 conversions over a 30-day period. So the more conversions you drive, the better your campaign performs. So it can be a struggle in the beginning because you have no conversion data. What you could do is set a target CPA here and say, I need to set conversions at 40, at, we'll just say at $50. So I need to drive two conversions a day. That's my goal is I have a $100 daily budget. I want to drive two conversions per day. Now, you can get your CPA lower than this. It really depends on competition, keyword costs, your conversion rate. There's a lot of different factors that go into this. Um, but what you're trying to do is just create a really organized campaign and then focus on driving as many conversions as possible. The other thing that we can do is we're going to click on cancel here. So for your dynamic search ad setting, just make sure you have this set up with your, your URL here if you're going to use dynamic search ads. The other thing that we can do here is if we go over here to tools and we go to budgets and bidding, if we go to our bid strategies here, you can set a portfolio bid strategy, create a bid strategy, and then set a max cost per click. The problem with doing this when you just start your campaign, if we click on the plus sign and we choose target CPA, you can come here and select your campaign from the list, name your bidding strategy, set your target CPA. But the most important thing here is advanced options. You can set minimum and maximum bid limits. So you may say, I don't want to bid more than $15 when I start my campaign. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend $100 per day and tell Google, drive me one conversion per day. Now, this wouldn't put too many constraints on your campaign. But if you have a campaign with no conversion data and you come into target CPA and you say, okay, I need to drive leads at $25 or less and I can't bid more than $5. Well, all the keywords that you're trying to target for HVAC repair and all these different service keywords, your ads may just never show in Google. So when you set a constraint like this, it's not only going to make sure you don't spend anything, it's going to make sure you don't drive conversions either. So sometimes the best thing to do, and it, the, for the first week, you just got to kind of say, okay, my costs are going to be way higher than I want them to be. Um, let's pause these ad groups for now. But the best thing to do is when you're setting up your campaign and you have your, your campaign go to your campaign settings with your bid strategy. Just make sure you are using the correct, make sure you're using the correct conversion tracking. Why am I not? Make sure you're using the correct conversion tracking and then come over to your campaign settings. This, this, new, uh, this new interface I'm still not quite used to yet, but we click on the campaign settings over here and what we wanna do is we wanna click, uh, choose the maximize conversions bidding strategy, set your budget slightly lower to get started and then as you go and you start driving conversions, start scaling that budget up. So what you may get over time is a message on your campaign that shows your status is limited by budget. That is when you can say, okay, maybe I set a constraint and set my bid slightly lower, or what we do is we increase our budget and see if we could drive more conversions. So this is how to create a Google ads campaign for a local biz service business. Uh, you could get started by seeing if you're eligible for local services ads. So just come to this page here. I'll put it in the video description. Check your eligibility, see if your, uh, if your business is on this list here, and then just go through the process of signing up for local services ads. Showed you earlier how many companies are using this. Um, if we come over here to search HVAC in Myrtle Beach, ton of companies that are using local services ads and have been Google guaranteed here. So you can set your budget, you can turn your ads on and off, but either way, you still get the Google guaranteed badge uh, as long as you are in the local services ads program. So. If you have any questions about any of this, please leave in the comments section. If you need help setting up a campaign, feel free to reach out to Surfside PPC. Go to surfsidepppc.com slash services. I'd love to take a look at your campaigns and, and look at your business and, and offer you some help. So I do this in all over the United States. It's not just limited to the Myrtle Beach area. So if you have any questions, again, please leave them in the comments section. Thank you for watching my video and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.